The founders of the great Silicon Valley spying empires like Facebook have publicly declared that they intentionally included addictive schemes in, in their designs. Now, we have to say, this is what I would call almost a stealthy addiction. It's, it's a statistical addiction. What it says is, we will get the broad population to use the services a lot. We'll get them hooked through a scheme of rewards and punishment. Uh, and the, 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 the rewards are when you're retweeted. The punishment is when you're treated badly by others online. And then within that, we'll very gradually start to, to leverage that to change them. So it's, it's, this, it's this very kind of stealthy manipulation of the population. So it's not as dramatic as a heroin addict or a gambling addict but it is the same principle. Um, including studies released by Facebook scientists. So this is, this is something we can call a consensus. And, and when Facebook releases such things, they say, oh, but we do all these good things too that balance it. But there's, there's a general acknowledgement that uh, depression correlates. Uh, the scariest uh, example is a correlation between rises in uh, teen suicide and the, ri and the rise in use of social media. When you watch the television, the television isn't watching you. When you see the billboard, the billboard isn't seeing you. And vast numbers of people see the same thing on television and see the same billboard. When you use these new designs, social media, search, uh, YouTube, when you see these things, you're being observed constantly and algorithms are taking that information and changing what you see next. And they're searching and searching and searching and, and they're just blind robots. There's no evil genius here until they find those patterns those, those little tricks that get you and make you change your behavior. Traditional behaviorism, you would give an animal or a person a little treat like candy or maybe an electric shock, and you'd go back and forth between positive and negative feedback. And when researchers try to determine whether positivity or negativity is more powerful, they're roughly at parity. They're both important. But the difference with social media is that the algorithms that are are following you respond very quickly. They're looking for the quick responses. And the negative responses, like getting startled or scared or irritated or angry, tend to rise faster than the, uh, the positive responses, like building trust or feeling good. Those things rise more slowly. So the algorithms naturally catch the negativity and amplify it and introduce negative people to each other and all of this. And so what this does is it means that the algorithms discover there's more engagement possible, uh, say, by promoting ISIS and promoting the Arab Spring, and so ISIS gets more mileage, or promoting uh, the Ku Klux Klan than Black Lives Matter. Now, in the big picture, it's not true that negativity is more powerful, but if you're doing this very rapid measurement of human impulses instead of accumulated human behavior, then it's the negativity that gets amplified. So you tend to have elections that are more driven by rancor and abuse, and you tend to have outcomes that are kind of crazy. The people who run the tech companies like Google and Facebook are not doing the manipulating, they're doing the addicting. <laughs> but the manipulating, which rides on the back of the addicting, is the paying customer of, of, of such a company. So, uh, and, and many of those customers are not at all bad influences. They might simply be trying to promote their cars or their perfumes or whatever. I love Silicon Valley and I do not at all feel that I've turned on my own kind. And just to be clear, I'm very much a part of this. I, I've sold a company to Google. I'm not in any sense an outsider. I believe that what we're doing is not in our own self-interest. Uh, business interests are a part of society. If they destroy society, they destroy themselves. I believe it's very clear that we could offer all of the good things, and there are many, many good things in these services, and social media in particular. I'm convinced we can offer them without this manipulation engine in the background. There's a world of other business plans, and I think they'd be better for us. So I, I, I don't think we're being evil so much as we're being stupid.
We've created this bizarre society that's unprecedented where if any two people wish to communicate over the internet, the only way that can happen, the only way it's financed is through a third party who believes that those two can be manipulated in a sneaky way. It's, it's, a, it's an insane way to structure civilization. So we can keep all the good stuff, and there is good stuff on social media, of course. We can keep all that and just throw away the manipulation business model and substitute in a different business model. And, and there are many alternatives that would be better. They just have to be honest. Uh, it could be a paid service like a Netflix where you're paying for it. You're the genuine customer. It has to keep your interest. It could be like a public library. It could become a, a public thing that, is, uh, that isn't commercial at all. That's an option. Uh, but what we did in Silicon Valley is we wanted it both ways. We wanted everything open and free, but we wanted hero entrepreneurs and hackers. And so the only way to get that was this advertising thing that, that gradually turned into the manipulation engine as the computers got faster. And this, this weird business plan, it, once you can see that there are alternatives, you realize how strange it is and how unsustainable it is. This is the thing we must get rid of. We don't have to get rid of the smartphone. We don't have to get rid of the idea of social media. We just have to get rid of the manipulation machine that's in the background. I, I tend to think that manipulation time when the kids are, are being observed by algorithms and tweaked by them is vastly worse than just screen time by itself. They're addictive but not manipulative typically. Now there, I, here I'm not sure how evil we've become lately because <laughs> there might be some video games that are using behavior mod techniques for pay that's conceivable. I can see how that could happen. If you're thinking about it out there, don't do it, okay? <laughs> Find something better to do. But the, the mainstream video games are not doing that. They are addictive. So there are plenty of things that are addictive that aren't leveraging that for manipulation. So these are two different stages. But see, the thing is, getting them to pay is still not manipulating them for a third party. That's getting them to buy stuff. I mean, Amazon does that to get you to buy stuff. Uh, all kinds of people do that. that that might be annoying, you might object to it, especially if you feel your kids are wasting money, you might object to it, you might feel it's not an ideal um, example of human behavior and character and maybe there could be a better business, whatever. There, but it's not directly manipulating you, say, to influence an election. It's not trying to change your behavior out in the larger world. And, and that's the thing that's really tragic about designs like Facebook and Google. They are succeeding at doing that. I would like to make two very quick pitches on that account. One, if you're a young person and you've only lived with social media, your first duty is to yourself. You have to know yourself. You should experience travel. You should experience challenge to yourself. You need to know yourself and you can't know yourself without perspective. So at least give it six months without social media and really quit him. Don't like quit Facebook to keep another Facebook thing like WhatsApp because then it's, it'll still be spying and manipulating. Get rid of the whole thing for six months and know yourself and then you can decide. I can't tell you what's right. You have to decide but you can't until you know yourself. And then for the rest of society I'd say as long as we can have some small percentage of people who are off it, then the society can have voices to give perspective. If everybody's universally part of this thing, we cannot have perspective, we cannot have a real conversation. And it's too lonely right now, <laughs> you know. We need more people who are just outside of that loop, who are thinking without the manipulation, and I think we'll find it extraordinarily valuable to have them. <laughs>